because Google has changed some of the different setup options that you can use in your Performance Max campaigns. And because I've been getting a lot of questions about this, I wanted to give you an updated step-by-step -step training on how to best set up your Performance Max campaigns for the remainder of 2024. Now, I do wanna stress that what I'm gonna be dealing with in this video is the setup for e-commerce brands. So this is gonna be people who are running Performance Max with a shopping feed. Now, if that's not you and you are a service-based business or online coach or a service as a software business, never fear because what I'm gonna be doing is next week I'm gonna be releasing another video which is all about the setup for Performance Max campaigns for you. And if you wanna make sure that you never miss when I release any videos about Google Ads, make sure that you don't only subscribe but you also turn on that notification bell so you always know when I release my latest Google Ads training videos. All right, so for all your e-commerce brands that wanna use Performance Max, before I get to that step-by-step -step guide, I do wanna just quickly break down the right way that you should be using Performance Max. Because for me, regardless of what your Google rep is saying, you should not be starting Performance Max right at the start. The reason for that is that you need to remember that with Performance Max is that these campaigns were built to take the conversion data, so the best converting search terms, products, and audiences that is already in your accounts, and then use that as a base model and then build out from there to find new potential customers. And the way that Google does that is that it looks at your current audience profile and then finds similar people. So it's basically going, well, if these people like your products, we think that there's a good chance that these people over here might like your products as well. The problem being is that if you don't have a good level of conversion data, Google is just really just doing a scattergun approach and it doesn't know what is going to convert for your business. So that's why I'd recommend that you start with a combination of search and shopping campaigns. What this also allows you to do is that this also allows you to get very clear on the best converting keywords, the best converting ad copies, the best converting product pages and product images. You can also make sure that your product titles are relevant to the highest converting user search terms. So when you're starting as a new brand, stick with search and shopping, and that way you can really focus on really getting a clear idea on what moves the needle in terms of optimizations for your brand. And now to answer that big question of when you should start Performance Max, I'll be waiting until you're seeing at least 30 conversions a month. And the reason for that is because I find that that gives Google a good level of data in order to be able to start finding out those similar audiences and similar conversions. The other benefit of starting with search and shopping is that you can then also tailor your Performance Max campaign and really segment out the campaigns that you're running in your Google Ads account. Because what you can do is that when you start that Performance Max campaign, the strategy which I'm recommending is that you really focus your Performance Max campaign, I'm gonna show you how to set up this option, where you're focusing it on new customers, so bidding for new customers, you then add your brand to the brand exclusion list. So what's happening there is that you are then using search and shopping to target on those high user intent to really target those high converting search terms. And then you're using Performance Max to go out and target new business which haven't heard of your products or your brand before. So that's the strategy and some better guidelines for how to best use Performance Max right now. But if you've got those things in place and you're ready to jump into the world of Performance Max, let, we're gonna jump into a screen share so I can show you the step-by-step -step process of setting up your own Performance Max campaign for your e-commerce brand. Now, we are gonna be going through this quite quickly, so if you do miss any of these steps, never fear, because if you follow that link in the description below, you can get access to my Performance Max campaign setup guide, and this has just been updated, so if you've got my old version, you can get this new version, and this is updated for the current settings which are relevant right now. As I said, if you miss any of these steps, just follow that link in the description below so you can get my Performance Max setup guide. Let's go. So when you're in Google Ads, you want to go through and press new campaign. You can either use this button here or also this create up the top. It doesn't matter which one you use, it's going to take you to the same place. So we're going to go new campaign. Now the first option will be what's your different campaign objective. Now because this is an e-commerce brand, I'm going to be going through and choosing sales. Because this is an existing campaign, we've already got a purchase goal in place. If you don't have that, you can set this up later. Now the great thing is, is that majority of people watching this video would be using either Shopify or WooCommerce and both of those do give you a really, really simple connection process between Google Ads and Shopify or Google Ads and WooCommerce. You can do that internally in your Shopify or WooCommerce platform. We've already got purchases set up in here. So then we just go through and click continue. And then it comes down to selecting your campaign type and we're gonna be choosing Performance Max. Now, the other thing that you will need to have as well is that you will need to have 
uh, linked up your merchant center. Once again, with Shopify and also with WooCommerce, that is all seamless. And then you just need to make sure that you've got the right merchant center selected in there and then go through and click continue. Now it comes through to bidding. So I would generally recommend a conversion value bidding target. Google will also recommend to set a ROAS to start with. Now I would not recommend that. The reason being is that the ROAS target that Google is gonna give you is gonna be based off any existing campaigns you have in there. So whether it be your search or your shopping campaigns. And we just don't know whether this performance max campaign is going to convert at the same level as your search or shopping campaign. So what we'd wanna be doing in through here is that realistically, when it comes to starting a new campaign, I'm not adding in a new target ROAS for at least a good three to six months. And what I'll do at the end of this video, I will give a link to how I set my bidding options. So stick around to the end of the video and I'll put that link in there. But at the moment, keep that clear. And then this is the part where we're gonna be optimizing for acquiring new customers. Now, remembering that we can only do this because we've already got some active search and shopping campaigns. And this is the option that we wanna choose, only bidding for new customers. Now, the reason for why you start with search and shopping is because this gives you this option. Because what we can do in through here is that see in here, we've got all of our audiences, which our current converters, our visitors, our past buyers, different product viewers, and even our shopping cart abandoners. So, so what we've done through here is we've assigned saying that these are the audiences that we don't want this campaign to target. Now, Google will also put in a different conversion value in through here. And what this is basically just doing, this is an internal conversion value because we're using conversion value bidding. It's just gearing up the pricing for this to make it a lot more valuable. I'm happy to run with this suggestion in here. We just go through and click apply because this is a test account that I'm using. You can see this little red thing in here. It's just saying that the reason for why this is not showing is because we have got a small list. Once again, because this is a test one, but if you do see this, I would then go back and focus more on search and shopping and then come back and use Performance Max in this setting when you've got enough audience sizes because you do need a thousand active users in those audiences. Then we go through and click next. Now, when it comes to your different locations, so when it comes to location targeting with your Performance Max, I generally like to keep it by country unless you're dealing in like countries tightly grouped together, say for example, in Europe, I'd group similar countries together. If you were a brand outside of Australia, you could even target similar countries like Australia and New Zealand together. The main things you wanna just be considering is you wanna be considering the different seasons, so the different weather changes and also different language concerns. But for this one, we're just gonna choose Australia. And then from there, you can go through and go into the more settings. So with this more settings, that's where you would add in the brand exclusions. And for this one, you would go through. And what I would do there is I'd type in your own brand name. So Save that and what that's gonna do, that's gonna stop Google Ads targeting searches which include your brand name in it. So that's the way that you add that in there. So make sure you go to all settings. Now also with this one as well, with your automatically created assets, I do keep this on because once again, we're doing this not as a starter campaign, we're doing this as a secondary campaign. So we're already gonna be giving Google some extra data on that. But what I would do is I would go through, you may wanna consider excluding some URLs. So for example, if you were only wanting to target your men's products, you would add and you would exclude all your, your women's and children's products or vice versa. So that's a good way that I would go about and do that. I generally do that by rules. So once again, if we only wanted to target our men's products, we would add in whatever URL rule would be that's gonna be cutting out those URLs that we don't want the ads to go to. Once we're happy with that, go through and click next. And then from there, you can see now that Google has this asset creation tool which comes through. But what I would say with this is remembering that we have got data from our search and our shopping campaign. So what I would do from there is that I would be putting this to specific category-based landing pages. And what Google is also giving is it's, you know, letting you know what products or service you wanna be advertising to. And then also as well, you can just put through some different information there. At the moment, I'm still going through and creating this by myself, but I will go through and just show you if you just go through and say, generate the assets. All right, so by adding that in, Google will go through and create this. But as I said, I still go through and change this personally. So with the asset group name, what I would be doing in here is I'd be writing this out by your product category. So if, if you were selling men's clothes, you might have men's shirts, then you might have another asset group name for men's shorts. And so with the asset groups, what you wanna be doing is you wanna be building out your different asset groups based around your different product categories. So the way that you then go through and align this is that you go through to your listing group and you could do it by category 
category. This is now coming down to your brand, but let's just say we wanna put all of our baby and toddler products in here. That way, we're just going to those baby and toddler products. You can also do this by item ID, where you could select some individual items. But just for this example, we're just gonna go category based. And then from there, it's just a matter of going through and adding in your different headlines and your different long headlines. Now, now I'm just gonna use this generate function, but what I would be doing, remembering once again, when we're setting up this Performance Max campaign, we already know an idea of what converts because we're using our search campaign. So what I'd be doing is I'd be going into my search campaign and adding in my highest converting headlines and my highest converting descriptions. That's another reason for why I wouldn't start with Performance Max. And then we can go through as well and select some different images. Now for the videos in through here is we can also add in some of our videos. Once again, we don't need this to start, but if just remember that if you don't have a video, Google will automatically create one for you. And same with the site links, we've already got some different ones in here that we will just add in. If you don't have any site links in there, you can go through and add these in there straight away. Now, the last part that we need to go through is that we need to go through and add in our signals. Now, it is important to note that with Performance Max, consider these to be suggestions. These aren't targeting. So it's not like you're targeting an exact match keyword. So with search themes, once again, this is just giving Google an idea on what are the best converting search themes. So what I would do here is I would add as many of these search themes that I could use. And where I'd get these search themes from is I would get them from my top 25 converting search keywords in my search campaign and shopping campaigns. Once again, that's why I'm not starting with Performance Max. I'm using the data that I've got from search and shopping campaigns to build out a Performance Max campaign. And the same as well with this audience signal. So you can just add them in through here. So we're just gonna put top. Now, obviously that's not what we're gonna be converting, but that's basically what we'd be adding in there is our top converting search terms. I wouldn't include brand, but you wanna be selecting at least your top 10, but ideally if you've got 25, up to your top 25 converting search terms. Same with your audiences. What I'd be adding in there is I'd be adding in all of your different audiences in here. And then as well, I would also be adding in your top converting audiences that are converting in your search terms and also in your search and your shopping campaigns. And then if you do have any really, really clear demographic data, you would add that in through there as well. Then go through and click next. Now, Google will give you a recommended budget. Generally, what I would say with this, if you're using your search campaign and your shopping campaign, you're getting good results. I'd be recommending that you start your performance max budget anywhere between 25 to 50% of your total budget. So ideally, when you're adding in Performance Max, this would be new advertising budget because I wouldn't want to take away from your current high-performing search and shopping campaigns. Remembering we're wanting search and shopping to convert first and then we go through and set this budget. So if your search and shopping campaigns are running at combined budget of $50 a day, I'd be setting this custom budget you know, somewhere about $25. And then we just go through, click next. We can just put in a new campaign. What I would also do is I would write the product category. Now, the reason for why I do this is because that that way I can see a really, really clear idea of what this campaign is targeting. And then when you're happy with all of that, you can then just go through and click publish campaign. All right, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And remember, if you've missed any of those steps, make sure you follow that link in the description below so you can get access to my Performance Max e-commerce campaign setup guide. And now that you've got your Performance Max campaign running, you need to know how to correctly optimize that campaign. And so that you can optimize your campaign correctly, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. See you next time.